The massive volcano known as Mount Paiktu is a gigantic intraplate stratovolcano that's known for releasing devastatingly large explosive eruptions. The last major eruption is known as the Millennium Eruption, and it occurred here a little over a thousand years ago, at some point around 946 AD. It's recognised as the largest historical eruption in Asia, as well as being one of the two largest explosive eruptions that have occurred on Earth in the past 2000 years. But this volcanic complex has released several other large-scale explosive eruptions in its history, with another mega eruption that was similar in scale to the Millennium Eruption occurring 40 to 50,000 years ago, releasing what is known today as the Tianwenfeng Tuff. We covered the Millennium Eruption in the last video, the link to which you can find in either the description or the comments down below. In this video, we'll cover some of the older eruptions released by Mount Paiktu, as well as what made it suddenly change from releasing large effusive eruptions to devastatingly large explosive ones. Mount Paiktu began its explosive history at some point around 51,000 years ago. It's located about 1200 kilometers west of the nearest subduction zone. This magmatic complex actually began its life at some point around 29 million years ago, before Mount Paiktu switched to the violent explosive eruptions that it releases today. Its legacy was initially started with the release of several large effusive lava flows, and these lava flows would build up numerous shield volcanoes around the surrounding land, that would later be known as the Gamer Plateau. The shield volcano that would later become Mount Paiktu was known as the Tianxi Shield Volcano. It was built up after several eruptions, and data indicates that the Tianxi Shield was formed within a very short time period of up to 3 million years in total. Eruptions seem to have occurred in three different waves, and individual basaltic flows of the Tianxi Shield vary significantly in volume and in spatial distribution, from a few to dozens of kilometers in length, hundreds to thousands of meters in width, and a few to dozens of meters in thickness. So, things in this area were pretty non-explosive throughout the majority of Mount Paiktu's history. So, what originally caused the composition of the magma to suddenly change some 40 to 50,000 years ago? It's been suggested that it's the result of tectonic uplift of the last 3 million years in the area of the Korean Peninsula, Sea of Japan, and Changbai Mountains, with one paper suggesting a thickening of the crust under the area is taking place leading to magma pooling for longer periods of time, which in turn melts more nearby continental crust, raising the silica levels and altering the chemistry to become increasingly falsic. And on top of that, crustal thickening generally means the magma chamber requires higher levels of pressure to successfully erupt to the surface. So there was a sudden change in the magma composition from basalt and trachyte to bimodal commandite and trachyte. Mount Paiktu is a pretty understudied complex, and there exists a major issue with Mount Paiktu, and that's the massive variance that exists on the dating of the eruptions. And the eruptions are poorly understood to begin with, and their tuff layers haven't really been thoroughly examined. You see, there are several tuff layers that were released here, and the complexity of it still isn't fully understood to this day. The main reason for the lack of studies is primarily due to the availability of it for study to begin with, which has been stunted by political unrest among other things, with it being on the border between China and North Korea. And along with that, most of the older reports are just observations and anecdotal evidence that has been granted far too much weight. So it's only very recently that a more conclusive picture of what happened at this volcanic complex has began to take shape. Mount Paiktu's Past Explosive Eruptions At first, the Tianwenfeng eruption was given a date of occurring sometime 5,000 years ago. This is now thought to be incorrect, and it seems that this tuff layer has been confused with another tuff layer from an eruption that occurred here sometime around 8,000 years ago, which was known as something I can't pronounce, so I'll put it up on the screen for you. 
So far, it looks like the Tianwen Feng eruption began Mount Peiktu's explosive saga and it is now dated to having occurred roughly 42 to 50,000 years ago. It released vast quantities of yellow pumice and ignimbrite, and about 23.14 million tons of sulfur dioxide were released into the stratosphere following this eruption. The bulk volume of the ejector is at least 100 kilometers cubed, making the Tianwenfeng eruption a VEI-7 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index. This eruption would have began in a standard Plinian fashion, releasing massive explosions and expelling forth a vast ash cloud, whilst blowing out large chunks of semi-molten to molten rock, known as volcanic bombs, all over the nearby land, and releasing deadly pyroclastic flows, both from the volume of material that would fall back towards the earth from the ash cloud, and also from the scale of the massive explosions that would be belched out time and time again for hours or even days as the magma chamber slowly emptied its contents, before suddenly collapsing in on itself after it had become unstable, ushering forth the climax of the eruption, which would have been in the form of tremendously loud and cataclysmic explosions, followed by the release of numerous pyroclastic flows of immense size that would radiate outwards in all directions for tens or hundreds of kilometers. This eruption is what formed Tianxi Lake, also known as Heaven Lake, which, if you remember from episode 1, is the lake that encompasses the present day caldera after the last mega eruption, but it was the Tianwenfeng eruption that is actually responsible for first creating it. So after this massive eruption, we have the second one whose name I can't pronounce. Now this eruption was primarily an effusive one that produced a clastogenic lava flow down the northern slope of the edifice. Other explosive eruptions occurred around 2160 BC and possibly around 180 BC, with the latter date still in question. After this, the next eruption was the Millennium Eruption. This eruption was thought to have released a single layer of tuff, but recent studies have found this to be incorrect. It turns out this eruption released one massive tuff layer, then another the following day. This second tuff layer is also called a name I can't pronounce, so I'll put it up here and it was originally thought to have been deposited in an eruption around 1668 AD, which released a large pyroclastic flow. But it's now clear that the 946 eruption actually released this layer too. The most recent eruption to have occurred from Mount Peiktu occurred in 1903, and it released commandite rhyolite pumice, which was deposited on the eastern and southern slopes of the volcano. So after the 1903 eruption, Mount Peiktu suffered some volcanic unrest between 2002 to 2006, which brought renewed attention to its potential to pose a serious danger to any life nearby to it. But this activity eventually died down, and was most likely just magma moving to the chamber from deep within the earth. But overall, the history of explosive eruptions at Mount Peiktu is still elusive. So this is the entire story of the notorious Mount Peiktu volcano, whose history has only very recently turned violent, and seems to be on a trend towards releasing increasingly larger eruptions as the crust continues to thicken. But we won't know until the next eruption occurs. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, consider sharing the video around. It really helps the channel out. If you're a fan of volcanism, geology, geography, earth science or science in general, then consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. I'll be releasing more content like this regularly, so hit the bell icon to be notified of when I release a new video, which is normally every Sunday. Leave a comment letting me know what you think about this video, and if you have any video suggestions, please do let me know. Thank you again for supporting the channel, and I'll see you all real soon.